There are several techniques to move and rotate an underdefined component within the assembly environment. A component whose position is underdefined will appear with a minus sign preceding the component name in the assembly feature manager tree. This indicates the component has some freedom of movement within the assembly model. The most direct way to manipulate a component's position is to use the mouse buttons. Dragging a component with a left mouse button will move a component, while the right mouse button will rotate it. For more precise movements, another option would be to use the triad. The triad becomes available by right-clicking a component and choosing Move with Triad from the menu. The triad consists of three axes, planes and rings. I can use the left mouse button to drag an axis to move in a single direction, a plane to allow movement in two directions, or a ring to rotate about an axis. To specify values for the movement, I can right-click on the triad and choose to show a variety of dialog boxes in the graphics area. The Translate XYZ box allows me to specify a coordinate location for the component, while the Translate Delta XYZ box can be used to define exactly how far from the current position I wish to move. There is also a box to enter angle values for rotating. By default, the triad is aligned with the axes of the assembly coordinate system and centered over the component, but other geometry can be used to modify its alignment and position. I can drag the origin of the triad to move it to a new position. Align with the selection. We'll realign the triad axes. While move to selection, we'll realign the triad to the geometry picked and also move the triad. If I right-click on the origin of the triad, I can also choose to align to the component's origin or the assembly origin. Clicking off of the triad will clear it from view, and it will always return back to the default position and orientation if accessed again. For even more options to reposition components, the Move Rotate Component command can be used. This tool can be accessed from the Tools Component drop down menu, the right click menu, or the Command Manager when working in an assembly. The toolbars list separate commands to move or rotate, but in reality, this is the same command that can be used both ways. By activating the Move or Rotate group box at the top of the Property Manager, I can switch between the two. Drop-down menus in these areas allow me to define specifically how I want to change the position of the part. This command also includes options to allow components to interact with each other while moving. Collision detection will identify when components collide and has the option to stop at the collision point. Physical dynamics will allow one component to push another, for instance. The option for dynamic clearance can also be turned on to identify the clearance between components while moving. Most of the advanced options relate to the behavior for collision detection and physical dynamics if used, but another important option to be aware of is the This Configuration checkbox. If multiple configurations exist in an assembly, moving components will affect all configurations by default, but this checkbox can be used to reposition components in just the active configuration, while other configurations would remain unaffected. When working with an assembly that has moving parts, it is often important to know if parts will interfere with each other while in motion. The Move Component command includes the option to detect collisions to help identify if, when, and where collisions between components will occur. I'll activate the Move Component command from the Command Manager and turn on the Collision Detection option in the Property Manager.
I can choose to have SOLIDWORKS check for collisions between all components of the assembly, or pick specific components I'm interested in by selecting these components. Selecting components limits the scope of the evaluation and can greatly increase the performance of this tool in a large assembly. This option may also be necessary if the assembly incorporates interference fits between parts or threaded fasteners, since these would not need to be identified as collision areas. To select components, I can simply click on them in the graphics area while the selection box is active, and then choose Resume Drag when I'm ready to continue with moving the components. I could also limit the scope of the detection by checking the option for Dragged Part Only. With this checkbox enabled, solid parts will only check for collisions with the part being directly dragged and moved within the assembly. With the option Stop at Collision checked, SOLIDWORKS will prevent parts from moving past a collision point. Under Advanced Options, there are further selections that assist in easily identifying the area where components collide. The default selections are to highlight the component faces that touch and also to play a sound when a collision takes place. The checkbox for Ignore Complex Surfaces can be enabled to check only for collisions between planar, cylindrical, conical, spherical, and toroidal surfaces. Once I've adjusted the options to suit my needs, I can use the left mouse button to drag the components of the assembly and clearly identify collisions between the parts. I'll modify the two yoke components to solve the collision issue. I'll edit the yoke female part and add a 2 mm chamfer to these inside edges. I'll also edit the yoke male component and apply the same chamfer. To verify these parts no longer interfere with each other while moving, I'll use collision detection in the move component command once more. Now that I have a working model, I may want to know the clearance between these moving parts. The Dynamic Clearance checkbox allows you to do this. When I enable the option, I must next select which components that I would like to have SOLIDWORKS measure the clearance between. In this case, I'll choose the yoke components from the assembly. The Resume Drag button completes my selections and allows me to now use the left mouse button to move components again. With dynamic clearance enabled, I can see in the graphics area where the minimum clearance is located as the components are being moved. Also, once the parts have gone through their entire range of motion, I can see the lowest minimum clearance value listed in the Property Manager. An additional option here also allows me to define a clearance value to stop at. This can help identify the point within the assembly's movement that it is reaching a minimum allowable tolerance. 